Welcome back. Today we're going to be learning about self hosting our workflows within N810. So, say we have this workflow, this automation pipeline that generates and publishes short content to YouTube. Now, the problem with this configuration is that it's currently running on local host, which means that it's running on our local server. And this adds a level of risk because if our local machine goes down or it's turned off, this whole automation pipeline that's based on a trigger that runs daily is going to be offline. So, by self hosting and creating our own server with a resource such as Render, we can mitigate this risk and provide a level of redundancy. And what makes NA10 so powerful in comparison to its competitors like Zapier and Make is that this is open source, so this is accessible to us. So we can actually self-host this so that the only costs that we are consuming are the operation costs of running our NA10 workflows. Whereas with Make and Zapier, you not only have the server costs, the operation costs, but you have the scaling infrastructure, which is a huge markup within these competitors. So with the self-hosting NA10 platform, this doesn't charge per operation, so you can make a thousand to a million operations and the only limit is your server capacity. And like I said, this is all achievable because NA10 is open source, meaning that there's no license fees and the code is open to the public, whereas Zapier and Make are closed platforms. So let's have a look at two ways that we can self-host this with a platform called Render. So the two approaches we're going to be looking at are with NPM, so Node Package Manager, and Docker, where we use a Docker image to store our NA10 to upload it for Render. So if we come into Render, get started for free, this will prompt you to set up a workspace so you can sign in with your Google account. And once you reach the dashboard, you'll have something that looks very similar to this. And what we want to do is deploy a web service. So we can click on that. And the first one that we're going to be looking at is a Docker image. So we can select existing image. Now, before we jump into this, I just want to explain briefly what a Docker image is. A Docker image is basically like a container and it contains your application code, your runtime. So whether you're using Node.js, Python, Java, whatever that is, libraries and dependencies, and it all stores it within this one image. That means that we can upload this to our web service within render. So what you want to type in here is docker.na10.io forward slash na10.io forward slash na10. Now, if you're wondering where I got this from, I got it from the NA10 documentation. So if you navigate to the GitHub repository of NA10, which I'll add a link to in the description, you scroll down, there is a section to deploy with Docker. And there is this section right here. So if you just copy and paste this, or go into your render dashboard. We don't need to add credentials here. Click connect, or we'll just say it's NA10 test. We don't need to add a project to this. The region for me is going to be EU Central, so Frankfurt, that's the closest one to London. This is going to be a hobby project, so we can select the free tier. If you are going to be consuming multiple operations within your NA10 workflow, then starter would be the best method. Also, it doesn't include the wind downs of the server. So with the free tier, after 50 seconds or so, the server winds down. So you'll have what's known as cold starts within the software engineering world, meaning that it'll take a little bit longer. I say a little bit longer, a fair chunk longer in order to spin up the server for the workflow. So if you're doing anything with multiple operations that are time dependent, definitely look at using the starter pack. But seeing as we're doing this just as a tutorial, I'm going to use the free tier. In regards to the environment variables, this is more for when you're configuring larger projects. We don't need to allocate any right at this instant. So we can deploy this web service and this will take a fair bit of time. So I'm going to speed through this section. And just to know, as you can see here, your free instance will spin down with inactivity, which can delay requests by 50 seconds or more. So it'll take a minute in order for the server to spin back up to process a request which is a fair chunk of time, especially if your automation workflows are time dependent. So please bear that in mind with the free tier. If you want to avoid this, upgrade to the start pack, which is only $7 per month. So within this section of render, you'll also be able to see all the logs. Here, there is a deprecation related to your environment variables. It's saying that we need to set any 10 runners enabled equal to true as part of our environment variables, which we could do as an extra step once this is done. I'm just going to let this deploy. As you see here, it's in progress. Once this is done, this will be set to live. Okay, and as you can see, it's now set to live. So if we scroll up, we have this. We can copy this to clipboard, and this is our URL. So if we navigate to that link, we now have our own instance of NA10 running on our own server. Very cool stuff. The only thing to bear in mind is that this isn't on localhost anymore, as you can see based on the URL here. So this is going to be slightly slower, especially because we're using the free tier. So the requests are obviously going to have to go to render servers, and then the response is going to have to come back to us rather than it all being carried out within our local host. Management algorithm, yes. Brad, new strong password. I don't want to receive any updates. Let's click next. What best describes your company? Let's just say I'm not using this for work. Did you hear about us? Google, get started. Cool. Okay, so you can get paid features for free here. I'm just going to skip this step. And now we have access to our workflow. So we can create a new workflow, import a new workflow from one that we've done on localhost. Very straightforward. So that's the first method with a Docker image. It's probably the most simple method. So what I'm going to do is delete this web service. So if we come into here, go into all services, scroll down, click these three dots, settings, scroll all the way down, delete web servers, 
copy this in and delete that. So now what we want to do is create one using npm. So npm is just node package manager. So we are using node in this case in order to deploy our service. So what we have to do is navigate back into the na10.io GitHub repository. And this GitHub repository is just where coders and programmers alike can store all of their code. So this is where the entire NA10 project is. And because it's open source, we have access to all of this. So what we need to do is fork this repository. So we need to create a carbon copy of this. So if we click this, I'm just gonna say NA10 render test as the repository name, name it whatever you want, create the fork. So we have created the copy of NA10. So this contains the entire code base. Now what we can do is go back into render, deploy a web service, click on GitHub. We need to install render. So I'm going to select my account. This is important. We don't want to provide render the permission to all of our repositories. So let's only select a specific repository. And that's going to be the render repository we just forked. So if we select that, scroll down, install this. Now we have access to that code base. And what we're going to do with this code base now is we're just going to select this and deploy it to render. That's how simple this is. In regards to the language, we're using Node. This is NPM, so Node Package Manager. The branch is master branch, because remember when we forked the NA10 code base, we only forked the master branch. Region, again, you can specify which one you want. I'm going to choose Frankfurt. Root directory, optional. And then we have the build commands. So this is using PNPM. So NPM is Node Package Manager. P is just an optimal version of this. We can select the free tier. Again, this is going to have cold starts. If you want to avoid cold starts and improve, say, scalability and redundancy, then go to starter or standards. Again, it's also based on your CPU utilization. So obviously, the more automations that you're doing, if you're working for multiple companies, you're going to probably want uh, either standard or pro as well. So once you've selected your instance type, we can scroll down in environment variables, specify node version, and we're going to choose node version 20, which is the most recent stable version. Once that's done, all we've got left to do is deploy this web service. And from my experience of deploying web services by Docker images and by using Node, this one usually takes probably three times longer than a Docker image. So I'm going to wait for this to deploy and then I'll come back. Okay, that's finally built and deployed and that's now set to live. Just for context, this took over 15 minutes to deploy in comparison to the Docker image, which took around, say, three to five minutes. So definitely the slower option of the two. If we scroll up, copy this URL to clipboard, open it up. So management, I would yes, Brad Smith. Let's just choose a strong password. Do the same again. Hit started, skip this. And now we're in our NA10 ecosystem and we can start a workflow from scratch. So that's it. You have two options to deploy NA10 to render and host it yourself using either NPM or Docker image. This will help you save a considerable amount of money compared to competitors like Zapier and Make and provide high levels of scalability, more redundancy and customizability. In terms of the most efficient approach, I would lean towards the Docker image implementation as it's a more seamless process to get up and running and doesn't require any knowledge of GitHub and forking repositories. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.